Ciao Bedazzi and welcome back to my channel. Time for me to go back to prison, and after my stay in Spike Island, I am being transferred to Cork City Jail, located in an area of the city called Sunday's Well. Stay on for a complete tour with cells, prisoners, and movie-like escapes. But first, some history. Built in 1806, this jail replaced the old one on Northgate Bridge that had become too old and overcrowded. The roads and the outside walls were then completed in 1818. This is a place full of stories and characters with well-designed audiobooks and expert guides to walk you around the buildings. This place housed both male and female prisoners, which were hosted in two separate and opposite wings, at least until 1878, when it became a female prison only. I'm inside the cell now. I just close the door. You can see the outside from this little hole in here, and the cell is super small. Just look around me, that's it. And the window is so high, so you can't even see what's going on outside. Mothers were sent to prison with their children, as some of the mannequins inside the cells show. Marianne Tuhe gave birth to her son while being in jail. Her crime? She stole a cloth cap. These mannequins are a nice addition to this prison museum, as they help telling stories and imagining the harsh conditions inside the jail. Some important prisoners were sent here, like Constance Markievicz, the Irish revolutionary that became the first woman ever elected to the Westminster Parliament. Julia Toomney was only 10 years old when she tried to steal some bellows from a local shop and got sentenced to 14 days for attempting to steal. Conmaster James Burns, also known as Henry White, was sentenced to 6 months for attempting to get a delivery of clothes and fine luggage to his hotel, and then ran away without paying. If you think about it, you could have been jailed here for minor offenses like bad language or being drunk. Today it would be completely unthinkable. But in the 1800s, in this prison, things started to change. The notion of inflicting violence or death uh, was kind of getting out of fashion. So punishment, different type of punishment was actually preferred. The prisoners in this place would be sentenced, let's say, to making clothes or picking oak uh, rather than getting killed. Which, you know, it's not too bad if you think about it. The glass here protects some of the graffitis that were done by the prisoners back in whatever it was, 1923 or 1919 I see here. Some of the prisoners tell us, abandon all hope, went to here, I'm quoting that. And then there's another guy here from Middleton that was arrested on the 20th of February 1923. This is all authentic, this is all actual writing from the prisoners. I don't know if you can see it right. But this is absolutely fascinating. It's a big piece of history. I'm in the warder's room now. This is where the guards would stay. As you can see, the mannequins behind me are playing cards just to kill time. The rules in this prison were extremely strict, and not just for the prisoners, but also for the guards. What you see behind me is the rules that the guards had to follow. One of them actually says that in case of neglect, violence, or even a broken window, there would be charged. So the guards would have to pay the fees for the repair directly from their salary. Some of our methods. One of our inmates, a Mr. Keller, is in 
taken for drunkardly behavior. It is a minor offense, so you'll be picking oakum while he's in here. I'm right outside and the area you can see behind me looks like a beautiful garden, but apparently it wasn't always like this. And you know why I'm telling you this? Look at this arch here on the wall. The ground used to be way lower than what it is right now. This goes down all the way to the other side. So this means that basically uh, prisoners were trapped here. Uh, well, they were trapped anyway, right? Here's our story for today. It was November 1923. On a cold, frosty night, a bunch of prisoners attempted the great escape. The prisoners had calculated every little detail. They were moving in batches of 14 and they were waiting for the moon to go behind the cloud. So it was pitch black and they couldn't be spotted. One by one, they started jumping the wall. However, when prisoner number nine attempted to jump, he made a bit of noise and the guards were alerted. Luckily for the prisoners, the search didn't go on for too long, so they could resume the big escape. In pure Hollywood style, the prisoners would come down the windows up here using ropes made of bed sheets and cover, just like a movie. And they used the ropes to jump the very tall walls all around the prison. According to some records, up to 42 men managed to escape that night. Now, that's disputed. Some say only 12 did, some 14, some 42. One thing for sure, some men were recaptured, while others were never found again, so they lived the rest of their lives as free men. In 1927, four years after the prison was closed, this place became a radio station. This was the house of Cork 6CK, the first official radio in Cork. Radio 6CK made a significant contribution to the national broadcasting system of the Free Irish State. Thank you so much for watching this video, really appreciate it and I hope you like the Cork City Jail. The fact that this place was once a prison and now it's a very well run museum, given back to the community, it's just great. I love this place, I love the stories, it's so full of history that I can't wait to come and visit it again to find out more. Make sure you book your next visit to Cork soon enough and come here to the Cork City Jail. Ciao, bedazzi.